Hello everyone, this is Jason from Skinny Research and Development, and today I'm not exactly in my home in Florida. I am in the middle of Georgia on a lake where I grew up. Um, so today's video is going to take place here in the country. Obviously being out here today isn't going to be exactly an electronics tutorial. I just kind of have more of a show and tell. I want to show you this. This is a GPS tracker. Uh, that I've been given recently and I really have to give it back here within actually the next couple of minutes But I did want to take the time to show it to you because it has some interesting electronic stuff and some interesting implications uh, So let's get started. So this GPS receiver is just in this uh, Basic uh, kind of black hobby box. There's some mounts on the bottom These are magnets to help them stick to the dashboard. This GPS tracker was found inside of someone's car It was there for six years. They think it was there from 2006 to 2012 um, it was put in by, they think, maybe some sort of private investigator, but not entirely sure. But as you'll see later, it was put in by somebody who knew what they were doing. Uh, first thing you notice, there are three inputs on this. Uh, we've got a power input, um, GPS antenna, and the cell phone antenna. And I have all of the wires here. I'm just going to show you that. Power uh, connector. We have the power connector that goes to the box right here. And on this end, you can see that kind of looks like, a, like, like an automotive type power connector that you'd see under the dashboard or underneath the steering column. So when you hook this up, pretty much the device will power forever. As long as the battery in the car has charged, the alternator keeps charging it, then you're going to have power. To this is the GPS antenna, the GPS puck. Um, it is connected up to the box with this little gold coax cable right here. Um, as long as this can kind of see the sky, you're going to get a good uh, connection to the uh, GPS satellites. We can see where it's made. It still has the web address there on the back of the manufacturer. Um, this was placed underneath the dash as well so we could see the sky through the um, glass on the front of the car. The last thing is the cell antenna. Um, it looks like this. It was also under the dash. Uh, the connector was right here. I imagine when they took this out they were kind of in a rush or just wanted to see what it was and so unfortunately the coax got snipped here. Easily repairable though. So this was also done on the GPS antenna as well. So I've already kind of loosened the screws on this and taken the back off so we can slide this out. This is the GPS device or I should say the whole device. This was surprising to me. I did not expect to open up the box and see an entire cell phone connected to the circuit board, but there it is. And everything in here is pretty intuitive. I mean, if you want better cell phone reception, what do you do? Well, you go to the back of the cell phone that's in it, solder a little connection on from the antenna, and bring it out to an external antenna. If you want it to run forever, what do you do? Well, you make it where you can hook it to the car. So here's our power port right here and then we have wires that go from here and then of course that powers everything that you see gps module gps antenna here follow it up you'll see a little silver module down here that's the gps module that is feeding uh, the information to this system and from what i've been told this thing was only tracking so it wasn't uh, picking up conversation although um, kind of the way it's set up. Uh, it, if it didn't do that, it's not far from being able to do that. Of note, as far as electronics, uh, there is a uh, microcontroller on the back, uh, an Atmel product. If you want to look at the, the uh, data sheet, it's AT89LS8252. So I took a look at it really quick, uh, not enough to really um, make any deductions because I'm, like I said, I'm kind of in a rush to get this back to who it belongs to. It did kind of lay out all the bus pins and all the power and stuff like that. So, so something that's uh, understandable with just a little bit of work. So there are a lot of things I'm not sure about, for instance, why they use this little uh, RS looking 232 connector uh, here because there's nothing on the back side to connect to. It just looks like this is here to bring the information to the circuit board. So I imagine they could have used any number of things, but they went with this RS-232 connector. There is a three volt battery here, and I imagine the only reason you put that there is to keep some memory uh, powered or, or something like that so that it didn't lose some settings. So um, I, I'm only guessing at this point. And uh, there's another module here. It's a power trends module. I haven't been able to look that up yet, um, but I might do that if I have a little bit of time after this video. Um, I am not sure. I think this is a regulator, um, but it is an awfully big regulator if it is. One of the most interesting things on the circuit board that has nothing to do with electronics whatsoever is on the back side, uh, but it is interesting to note because you get a sense of what the person was thinking who put it in. Um, up at the top, you have the manufacturer and the part number here, but they've both been scratched completely through. So um, I did a little bit of searching and did find the manufacturer for this product. 
I believe it's called Tracking Products Incorporated, and then the part number here has been scratched off. So the guess is that they scratched this off so that it wouldn't be traced back to whoever put it in. Uh, I looked at the company's website. I don't think they make this anymore. In fact, I hope they don't because this is, I don't even think they could find phones for it anymore. Um, most of these things now, you're looking at uh, you know GPS tracker that you can dial into are a quarter of this size now. Uh, the company that makes this seems to sell to law enforcement, um, but also sells, it looks like, to just about anybody who will pay. I'm not sure if that's the case. If definitely was the case in 2006 or whenever this was purchased. Uh, the way this one was found is that the victim kind of got suspicious. There were a few uh, pointers as to you know, what was going on, somebody following them around. And so what they did is they took the car into a mechanic and had the mechanic pull the dashboard on the front of the car. And lo and behold, they had all of these extra goodies uh, underneath the dashboard. So if you guys out there have any stories of your own, um, on something like this that might have happened to you, or if you have any devices that um, you wouldn't mind me taking a look at or even making a video like this, I'd love to see them, uh, take a look at them, and send them back to you. This kind of stuff interests me to no end. So now i got to run real quick and get this back to the person who let me borrow it. If you have any questions or comments regarding this device, please leave them down below uh, in the comment section. I'd love to talk with you about it. And thanks for watching this unusual video here out in the woods. Uh, the next video, I imagine I will be back in the office, back at home, pushing out another electronics video for you guys. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.